Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. So I went to bed last night hoping that I'd wake up and that would all be a, it would all be a dream that the videotape was uh, missing or destroyed or not preserved. But no, it's actually the truth. They truly did massively and epically screw things up. No matter how you chop it, the government looks so inept right now and so ridiculously unable to perform their basic functions of guarding prisoners that it's almost mind-boggling to see. It's, it's, I, I hate to keep saying it, but it is, it's like a bad movie. It's like a, you wouldn't even believe this. If this was on TV, this would be like on sci-fi channel or something. That's how unbelievable all of this is. You might as well throw in a four-headed goat, uh, a kraken, a dragon, a hydra, a nymph, an army of ogres, some dwarves, some elves, because that's, all, that's what kind of fantasy we're living in right now. That's how crazy this whole entire story has become. I can't even believe, I can't begin to explain to you how mad I am about this whole videotape thing. I am, I, I don't understand why this has been such a trigger point for me, but I am launched into orbit over this. I am so agitated. How is it possible that that video goes missing? And then how is it possible for you to stand up there and say to us, well, yeah, it just went missing. It was a technical error, though. No, sorry, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it for one single second. A technical error? No, absolutely not. Not at this high of a level. You can't afford to have a technical error. What is this, the drive through at Taco Bell? Oh, sorry, sir, I didn't give you your hot sauce. Do your jobs. How difficult is it? How difficult is it? You sure don't mind pulling in that pension when all when all said and done, do you, Justice Department people? But yet, here we are, all these years later, and the only two people that are facing prosecution so far are the two guards that were on duty. Not the man who was in charge of the chain of custody. Not the supervisor. Not the director. Not the big boss man. Not the honcho. Oh, no. The two small people on the totem pole, the easy hanging fruit, those two guards are the only ones charged? Come on, man. And look, like I said, I'm not saying that those guards shouldn't face punishment. They should. But uh, to, to be the only ones that are facing, facing punishment right now, to be the only ones who had their holiday all screwed up by this, I mean, come on. Come on, Where the, where's their boss? He doesn't take any credit or she doesn't take any uh, responsibility, I mean? There's a lot going on here, folks. The whole entire video situation just launched this whole entire case into another orbit. We are, we are entering a very, a very obvious cover-up phase at this point. I've been saying it from a, for a very long time on this podcast that we have left the conspiracy phase a long time ago, and we have entered the cover-up phase, and we are 100% smack dab in the middle of a huge, huge intercontinental cover-up, folks. And that's just how it is. I know that's hard for some people to hear. If you haven't been following this case and you're just getting, you're just acclimating yourself to it and you're just catching up possibly, and this is the first podcast you're listening to, you might be saying to yourself, this guy's crazy. There's no way that that's the case. Well, I, I, I suggest that you go back and you listen to all of the episodes and you do some, uh, and you read a little bit more about all of this because there is nobody that has a clear mind and who is looking at this case clearly, that looks at this and doesn't say, all right, this is effed up. There is something seriously, seriously wrong. And when you have the mainstream legacy media even coming around to that that uh, point right now, you know things are, are, are really starting to crumble for this cover-up. Now, you would think that they would be wise enough to know that the people are not going to accept their narrative this time around. You would think that they'd be wise enough to know that we're not going to accept their lies. Well, you'd be wrong. Because what they try and do is use the same exact 
the same exact method they use over and over and over again on the American people with the gaslighting and the propaganda and their little lapdogs in the legacy media running cover for them. And we've seen that with this whole Jeffrey Epstein thing. That's how they do it. And then they slap an investigation on it. The two guards get investigated. So that drops the whole shadow over the whole entire thing that occurred in jail, right? They obfuscate by running another investigation concurrent with the investigation that was originally going on and the people aren't buying it anymore the people are done with the bs all right so i'm gonna digress a little bit here and we're gonna jump into a little bit something different we're gonna talk about prince andrew i know our favorite buddy prince andrew he is such a clown such a jerk such a moron such a buffoon such a piece of shit, all right? Uh, That's really no other way to say it about Prince Andrew. You know, there's all this stuff about how he hadn't met uh, Jeffrey Epstein until 99, blah, blah, blah. We all knew that was BS. We all knew that Prince Andrew was running running the streets with Jeffrey Epstein earlier than that. And here in the Daily Mail, we have a masseuse who comes forward that says she was hired by Jeffrey Epstein in 1996 to work on Prince Andrew's back. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously, right? If the massage is over age, you know, she's of age and she's regular massage, then that's cool. But what it does show, again, more of a pattern of the lying. And we see that with all of his enablers, the lying. Enough with the lying, Prince Andrew. Enough lying come clean come clean it's your only hope and furthermore not even come clean come forward with whatever information you have strike a deal with the government roll over on Ghislaine Maxwell that is your only path to getting out of this okay and even then you're going to have to still suffer the legal consequences but the only way to give yourself a little bit of cushion here princey boy if i could give you a little bit of advice is to roll over on everybody that was involved. Whatever information you have, come forward. Be a man. All right? Be honorable. And show up in your best kit. Because besides that, once Ghislaine Maxwell's brought in, once these other girls are brought in and the screws get put to them, and the FBI's version of Sandan Glockta gets his hands on them, oh, buddy, there is going to be some singing going on. It's going to be like an episode of American Idol with all of the singing going on. Because if you think any of these girls, any of these women, any of these guys that were in an Epstein circle are prepared to do a hard time, I got another thing coming for you, folks. There is no way, no how, any of these people could ever stand up to the rigors of true and hard interrogation, okay? Oh, it's all fine and well when they plead the fifth and they know they're being protected by Alan Underwear Dershowitz and the rest of the the posse, right? Well, that's not going to occur this time. These girls can't afford these great lawyers on their own. And what is the estate going to provide these lawyers for them? Well, if they do, it doesn't matter. Bring in whatever, whatever prosecutors you need to bring in and crush these people. Slap them with Rico and make them flip. How hard is it? All right, so the article is from the Daily Mail. The headline is, Pedophile Jeffrey Epstein ordered masseuse for Prince Andrew at Five Star Los Angeles Hotel in 1996, three years before he claims they met. And again, there's nothing wrong with hiring a masseuse. There's nothing wrong with your buddy bringing a masseuse over to work on your back if you're messed up. Look, that's totally acceptable. That's the sort of thing, you know, that's a good friend, right? Yeah, my back screwed up. Hey, can you hook up this massage? All right, cool. Yeah, great. And if you looked at it in just, you know, stand alone, you'd be like, this article is ridiculous. Who cares? But what it does, you know what I'm going to say. Context, folks. It adds context. So that's what this article is going to do. It's, it, it establishes again that Prince Andrew is a liar. It establishes again that nobody believes him. The article was written by Sophie Tano for Mail Online. January 20th. I like that name, Sophie Tano. Sounds like a Star Wars name, right? Sounds like a pilot from Star Wars. All right, to the article. A masseuse who worked for Jeffrey Epstein has claimed she was instructed to give Prince Andrew a massage three years before he says he met the pedophile. 
Boy, isn't that weird. Andrew sure does have a bad memory. Do you think maybe he has, like, early onset of Alzheimer's or something? Some sort of dementia? Is that going to be his next excuse? The woman who wished to remain anonymous, I do not blame her. The sources I'm going to talk to in Santa Fe, they want to remain anonymous too. Why wouldn't you want to remain anonymous? These people are still walking the streets, being protected by the Navy SEALs. Maybe when all of these people are locked up and this traffic ring is scattered to the four corners of the world, then maybe people will start talking on the record. But besides that, people are scared, folks. People are scared. The woman, who wished to remain anonymous, claimed she gave Prince Andrew a massage in a five-star hotel in Los Angeles in 1996, after she was told Epstein told by Epstein that the prince had hurt his back. I wonder how he hurt his back. I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a big burden to carry around all those lies, so that's probably why uh, Prince Andrew's back was hurting. He probably, you know, all that strain on his spine from all the lies, well, I shouldn't even say spine because he's spineless. All those strain on him from all the lies probably was causing his back to hurt. The masseuse told the son online, Jeffrey called me. I do remember. And he said, my friend's coming into town. Will you massage him? And I said, you know, it's just innocent. And he was like, of course, that's all. It was normal. She claimed that she massaged the Duke of York at the Bel Air Hotel 23 years ago. Epstein just said, Will you work on one of my friends? He's hurt his back and he needs a massage. I went over and that was it. It was a thousand years ago. Again, folks, very innocuous, right? Lady comes over, she's of age, she gives a massage. Well, if that was just a standalone story, I would look at the the Daily Mail and say, who cares? All right, we know that he was being enabled. We know that uh, Epstein was being enabled by Prince Andrew. But what does this, what does, what value does this have for the case? And then, of course, when you put it into the bigger picture, you shoot it into the machine of the bigger picture and it pops out context. Well, it just builds a profile of this sick, disgusting bastard and his lying ways. The therapist also cast doubt over claims by the prince that he and Epstein were never close, telling the publication that the two men had been good friends and that Epstein was often trying his best to please the Duke. This was the... The grooming phase for the Duke even. This is probably in the early stages before they caught the Duke in the blackmail scheme. This is when they were grooming him to make him comfortable around him. Because make no make no mistake about it, folks. These these guys were groomed by Epstein's inner circle as well. Alright? Ghislaine Maxwell, they were drawn in. They were made comfortable. They were They thought that they were safe around these people. And then, bam! Caught up in the blackmail ring. Caught up in the honey trap. Keep your pants on. Okay, folks, if you're a politician, if you're a married man, if you're showing up to some island with some rich guy, do yourself a favor and keep your pants on. The anonymous woman added that during her time for working as Epstein, uh, for working with Epstein when she was in her 20s, the billionaire never came on to her. Well, she was in her 20s. She was way too old. I would remember if he came on to me because I get I, I used to get really pissed off when guys would, but he never did. And there was nothing weird, she said. Last month, Virginia Roberts, who now uses her name, uh, 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 Giffrey, accused the Duke of knowing she had been trafficked to the UK when they allegedly met when she was 17. She has previously claimed Andrew bought her alcohol in London's Tramp nightclub before they had sex at Ghislaine Maxwell's home. Again, stranger than fiction, right? A, a, tr- a, a, a club named Tramp. I've been saying that since this all came out. A, a club named Tramp? And that's where they, they took her? weird so weird all of this everything in this story is just so weird all right let's see here where were we okay sorry folks the duke has repeatedly denied the allegation insisting he spent the evening at home after taking his eldest daughter beatrice to a pizza express in woking surrey epstein is said to have sexually abused dozens of teenage girls He was arrested on July 6th and pleaded not guilty to federal charges of sex trafficking involving dozens of girls as young as 14. He was found dead on August 10th in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan and an autopsy concluded that he hanged himself. Allegedly. So, I've also been working a little bit to talk to some sources back in New York. I'm from New York originally. I know a lot of people there. And I might have a nice interview set up with somebody who spent time at MCC. So I'm trying to work on that right now. And obviously that'll, uh, hopefully it'll happen soon. But 
I'd like to really uh, sit down and, and talk to them in depth about their experience at the MCC. And maybe, maybe if they're willing, even have them come on the, the podcast and talk to you folks about what, what they saw while they were there. So I'm, I'm trying to work on that right now. You know, a lot, like I said, a lot of people aren't comfortable talking about this story, folks. A lot of people aren't comfortable going on the record. And you, you can see why. Look, we're dealing with very powerful people. We're dealing with very powerful, very scary people that have the power to reach out and destroy lives. They have the power to reach out and destroy lives. And not everybody's willing and not everybody's comfortable to stand up and have their name out there and to be very vocal about this. Not everybody was willing for the, for the, maelstrom, the maelstrom to come over them like that, right? And I respect that. You know, it, not everybody is that kind of person. Not everybody is willing to stand up and say, that's it, I don't care, say what you want about me, come after me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak the truth. And then there's some of us that were built for confrontation, not conversation. And I happen to be one of those people. Because when I see something is wrong, especially in the government, especially in the government, I can't keep my mouth shut. I refuse to keep my app shut. And now that I have a platform... Well, I'm going to keep using it until they take it from me to let everybody know that Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, Adriana Ross, Leslie Groff, uh, uh, Marcin Kova, the whole lot of them, Sarah Kellen Vickers, Jean-Luc Brunel, all of them need to be arrested. That's it. That, nothing else. Nothing else will come close to that. OK, they have to be arrested. They have to face punishment. And that's the end of it. And we'll be here every single day. Every single day until that occurs, talking about the story, bringing you the news, talking about different things, different angles that, you know, perhaps I have come up with or different angles that people close to me have come up with or angles that you have come up with on the podcast. Because like I always talk about, the emails I get from you people are incredible. You folks are just incredible. Absolutely, positively the best audience a guy could ever ask for. The the interaction and the emails and the ideas and the tips you folks send me, it's just, it's just incredible. And I think, you know, look at where we started, all right? When we first started this podcast, just with the daily drops in October. We had no movement like this. Andrew wasn't getting hard-pressed, really. I mean, there was some talk about it. But there was no investigations going on, nothing. And now here we are, the beginning of 2020, the roaring 20s. And we have ABC getting in on the story, CBS doing a 60 Minutes episode. So things are happening, folks. This story is not going away. They're not going to be able to squash this. It does not matter what the mainstream media does at this point, because us, right here at the, on this podcast and at other podcasts like The Prince and the Pedophile, those girls are absolutely amazing on that on that podcast. Make sure you give them a listen. Two Australian gals that are really, you know, bringing, bringing the thunder from down under. All right. So there's a lot of content creators out there that have had enough that are standing up and they're doing this at their own peril, right? Financially and otherwise. This is pretty much the only thing I've been focusing on for like three or four months at this point, folks. I have dedicated professionally my whole entire life pretty much to this story and, and curating it correctly. So... You know, we're all taking risks professionally uh, and otherwise when you when you wade into a story like this. But it's worth it. It doesn't matter because we're we're we've we've gotten to a point now where there's no return. It's either we're going to the top of the mountain and we're going to summit this son of a bitch or we're going to be stuck in a storm. So my suggestion is take a couple more hits off that. O, hit your O's real quick. Make sure your crampons are strapped on tight because we're making a summit push in 2020, folks. Because 2020, that's the year the predators turn into the prey. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. And folks, if you would like to help support the podcast, you can do that by clicking on the GoFundMe link. We are a completely self-reliant operation we don't have any private sponsors none of that stuff and if you notice even on the podcast the commercials are becoming more and more sporadic um i'm not really sure what the deal is with that but whatever it doesn't matter nothing none of that matters because i will be here every day rain snow sleet or shine so if you'd like to help uh you know 
produce more content and help us get to go where we want to go, different places to cover this case, go ahead and click on that GoFundMe link. And if not, just share it with your friends because that's just as important, if not more important. To get the, the podcast out there, to build the footprint, that is even more important, right? All right, everybody, I will be back later on today with an evolution episode and a daily drop. All right, folks, I hope you have an amazing Friday. The weekend's about to kick off, and we're going to be ready to go. A long weekend, getting ever so close to the departure date for Santa Fe. I don't want to give the exact date out because I keep getting emails from listeners who are uh, concerned. Oh, don't give the date out, blah, 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 blah. But just know, soon. We will be touching down in Santa Fe. And you will know when I'm there because as soon as I get there, I'm going to do a quick podcast to let everybody know that things are in motion. All right, folks, I will catch you all later on today.